am Dr. Yumiko Powder George from the Department of Chemistry and I have been lecturing there for a little over 10 years. So recently I have tried Plickers. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually looking for a solution that would um, work like Pool Everywhere or Kahoots or even Clickers, mm -hmm. which is a, a pretty expensive system to set up. Um, the limitation I saw though was uh, the reliability of either Wi-Fi in the classroom or students having you know, reliable data plans. So how could I engage my students without there being any barriers in terms of their accessibility or what tools they have? And from researching that, I came across Plickers, whereby all the students really need um, to engage in, in quizzes, which can be multiple choice or true and false, is a Plickers card, which I supply. So what does that look like? Ah. So it looks like it's like a QR code mm -hmm. and each student gets one of these or um, you could also mm -hmm. use it as a think pair share group share activity. Usually I use other things to engage my class. Mm -hmm. I use crossword puzzle tournaments. Um, I use um, where they build models. So I supply them with model skits. I put them in group. I will ask them to build a particular um, confirmation of a structure, for instance. But I also wanted a tool where I could give multiple choice questions, perhaps, and have them respond. And I can see um, that response in real time in the classroom. So then on the fly, I could make a decision. OK, I need to review this particular concept. Mm. So in the theory, we call that assessment for learning or formative assessment. Yes. So that was the main intent of the clicker. Yes, to have ah. a formative assessment um, whereby I can gather information from the the entire class mm -hmm. at once um to inform me hey do i need to revisit this concept with my students i've also used it as a background knowledge probe so for instance starting a new module um i need to know okay did they remember this from the previous course you know before i start building on that or scaffolding on on that information so um, what I like about Plickers is that it immediately from the scan of the room of the Plickers cards, I can see and they can see as well um, how much percent of the class got this question correct. So if only 20% of the class got the, con um, the question correct, then that tells me, okay, I need to go over this concept, perhaps in a different way than I did before, mm -hmm. right? Because something, there's a knowledge gap there. I yeah. even use it as an exit ticket. So for instance, if we um, cover a particular topic, I then use it at the end of class as an exit ticket, whereby I could see if they understood what we did. I set up the, the, qu the questions in queue mm -hmm. before class. So in terms of the activity, I just project the questions on the Plickers website. Um, they put up their cards, so I'll give them like a minute, depending on the level of question. And I also tell them this is training for your exams, right? Being able to think quickly. So I will project the question and they would, I would say, okay, you have a minute. And then they put up their cards with a selected choice, whether it's A, B, C, or D. And then I scan the room and a minute. <laughs> so you mentioned the choices. Now, I think I'm seeing on the card some letters. Is that correct? Yes. Tell me how that works. So the, the answer that the student selects mm -hmm. must be oriented at the top center. So for instance, if a student is selected A, okay. they would have to orient their card like this. Mm -hmm. If they are selecting B, then it would be like this, C or D. And each student has their own unique card. So you could actually assign a student name to a particular card. So each card has a number as well. This is card number five. So this is unique in the stack of cards. So as soon as I scan this card, I could actually see on the screen that this card has been scanned, which has been helpful as well, because when I'm scanning, I could actually see, okay, two cards are missing and I could see which number card has not been scanned. So the maximum number of clicker cards you can have is 63. That's what's available through the Plickers platform. So for instance, I had a class of 90 students. What I did was a think pair share activity where they were paired up so and they would discuss and 
put so up their answer. So cards now. Exactly. Okay, within yes. the limit. Yes. That's lovely. Yes. That's lovely. Right? And for instance, if you have a class of 180, then you could do um, three in a group. You could group it. Yes. And pick a question of, you know, the level that would require three persons to collaborate to deduce what the correct mm -hmm. answer is. So how do you go about signing up or getting Plickers to work in your classroom? If I wanted to try it in my class, how do okay, I Okay, so you go on the website, mm -hmm. Plickers.com, mm -hmm. and it will actually guide you through how to download and print off the cards. It will guide you through how to set up your questions. Now, with the free account, you could set up a maximum of five questions in a set. And then you also have to have the Plickers app on your phone because that's what you're using to scan the Plicker cards. So at no point, the student needs to have the app? No. So the, all the student needs is what I supply to them, which is only the Plicker card. What students have told me is, one, they like how it's anonymous. So for instance, you cannot look at your neighbor and tell what answer they had, nor can you tell if my answer was wrong, or I can't tell if your answer was wrong, but we could tell as a class Okay, only 20% got it correct, but we don't know who got it incorrect. So they liked that anonymous feature where even if I got it wrong, one, I'm not feeling, you know, ashamed. And then two, um, the lecturer is now explaining why that answer was wrong and why the correct answer was correct. So not only um, am I gauging the knowledge gap, but I'm also filling that gap with further explanation. I get feedback on how mm -hmm. the class is doing and the class gets feedback on how they're doing. They can now reflect on their learning journey. And what do you think this has done for them? Well, certainly for one, uh, they are more excited to come to the class. They enjoy classes. They are more engaged. I can personally see um, that high level on, of engagement, um, especially if they know it's coming in the end. You know, they're more cued into when I'm explaining something because as well to stimulate that I award prizes in some instance so you know they have their A game up and therefore they're they're engaged um, they love the activity um, and they've given me that feedback as well so, and then some of them in the think group share activity they, they said they like working in the group you know I enjoyed working in the group that was one of the feedback I got another one said um, I love the debate that it generates amongst my peers because in the group now, they're now debating, um, no, it's A or it's B, it's C, and then they have to now come to a common ground. And that in itself will help them understand, okay, well, why wasn't my answer that I thought was correct is correct? You know, so all of that, um, I think, helps um, with their learning journey. It helps clarifying any gaps that they, they would have had. And I could tell you enjoy using it. Yes, I do. <laughs> and I enjoy the, how I see they look. I mean, they look like, how is she scanning these cards with her phone and it's appearing on the projected screen? In real time. Like in real time. So instantly you can see how you did as a class. You actually see like a graph um, generated. Um, and then I now would review that question. Even if... It's just one person got it wrong. I would still review the question. Like, why is the answer A and not B, C, or D? So it's working for assessment. It's working for engagement. It boosts even your morale. Because yes. you are more into, into the actual class. And it's, and it's free. Yes, and pretty simple to set up.